Hello, people. How's everyone doing? Hopefully you can hear me this time. There's no uh, audio snafus. I'm still not, still not feeling great. Um, still, still kind of sick. So I apologize if my nose is stuffy. But we're gonna get it done. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, I know YouTube has. What's my pre-show music? Well, this is just my show music. Um, I use Stream Beats, uh, which is, um, I don't know if you uh, know who Harris Heller is, but he's a YouTuber. He reviews stuff, he's more centered around streaming, uh, but he reviews webcams and cameras and microphones and things. And uh, he made this free, oh well, copyright free. Yeah, it's free too. Uh, copyright free music that you can play in your streams, so. This is music that he either commissioned or uh, created himself or his team created. So there's different genres too, which is cool. This is like a it's supposed to be like a uh, chip tune kind of, but kind of blends into the techno too. All right, I'm going to. Uh, what are we doing tonight? We got an exciting night. Uh, tonight we are doing. ICs, the new ICs for the Open Tendo. Um, so this is like the second most exciting night, uh, other than well, third most exciting night, I suppose. So I'm gonna go over to the bench. Hopefully everything is set up, and uh, I'm gonna go over uh, what we're gonna do tonight. Everybody can hear me still. Hoping. Fingers crossed. Mana Mana Gucci. I don't know what that is, but I'm here for it. I hope everybody can hear me over in this other uh, scene. Let's see what we got. It's a little dark. Oh, got to turn my other light on. That, that would help. I think we're good. Alright, cool. So let's go over what we're, uh, what we're up to tonight. Actually, let me do one of these numbers. Make it a little brighter, maybe? A little bit? I know there's some glare over here, but it's unavoidable because this is very shiny. Alright, so last week, so this is the Open Tendo, our uh, open source replacement for a front loading NES motherboard. So we're slowly but surely populating everything. If you look at the pieces last week, last week, uh, our last stream a couple days ago, we populated all these, uh, all these yellow guys, these big ones. These are all capacitors. In the stream before that, we populated the uh, resistors. So um, tonight we have some exciting stuff. If you if you want to. Get a feel of what this product is and uh, some of the backstory. You can always check out the other um, VODs, especially the first one. That should go over in bigger detail about what this project is. Um, all right. So, tonight we have a bunch of bags of things. Big stuff. Actually, the first thing that I think we're going to populate is um, so the strategy up until now has been and this is and we're going to continue it has been basically from shortest part to highest part we're slowly getting from these little short parts like height wise off the board these are really uh, narrow I guess not narrow but <laughs> I don't know the name name for it short I guess to the taller parts so now we want to go even taller uh, but we can also do parts that are in between if we want to. Let me turn my iron on. So the reason I say this is exciting, the third most exciting part is because after this, um, we're going to have to take some parts off of the board, the old board that you can't buy new. Shallow? Yeah, shallow, sure. Or what's the opposite of shallow? Uh, 
deep. Uh, we're gonna have to take some parts off of this board, but I don't know if we're gonna get there tonight. So some of these parts you can't buy new, so you have to salvage them. Um, but uh, we're not gonna get there tonight. All right, so what we can do is, these are pretty simple parts. Um, I will be attempting, let me know if the music is too loud. I might turn it down a little bit. No, I put on some different music. This is better vibe. Uh, okay, so uh, I will be um, doing some drag soldering with the knife edge tip. Let me try to get it out of my thing here. So eventually, this is not hot. <laughs> I just took this out of the holder. I will be switching over to this because uh, if you look, a lot of these well, we'll get, I'll explain it more later, but a lot of these are pins that are in a row that are very easy to solder by drag soldering with this knife edge tip. Uh, but I suppose I could also do that with the, one of these um, plugs and let me put it in. So these plugs go, or these uh, sockets go on the edge. Like so, here's one. These are very, come on. And then we flip it over. These are also in a row, these pins here. However, I'm just going to do them with my normal chisel tip. And I might actually have to... See, here is the downside, and it's gonna be very hard to see. Um, but because the, the depth of this plug, actually some of these capacitors are taller, like this one here is taller. Than the, than the plug. So basically you risk, it's hard to see, but there's a gap now between the plug and the board or and the, and the table. So you risk this, this piece coming out before it's actually soldered and then you'll have a gap at the underneath, which you don't want. So what we're gonna have to do is, um, we'll have to tack down one of the ends, right? So take a little bit of solder in our soldering iron, this, and then pressing up with my finger underneath, right? So like that, I'm gonna tack on one of the, tack one of the, just one of the points. It doesn't have to be a great job. It just has to make sure that this is very sturdy in here. It's not gonna go anywhere. Now you could do the same for the opposite end. Well, now you can actually just solder onto the board on the opposite end but don't do all of them yet. So, all right, so we got both. Now I just wanna make sure that the whole thing is as flat down as it can get. So, that's pretty good. Now we can do them all. Um, and when you, when you, sometimes in my videos, actually you can hear, well, actually I try to cut it out. When I, when I start soldering, I try to take as much solder that's on the tip off as possible. So in the Hako soldering iron holder, there's this, uh, thing spongy. Well, it's, it's like a meshy, well, it almost looks like a Brillo pad. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing this and I'm spinning it around, basically just trying to get as much off of that as possible, because that really helps when you um, go to solder something new. Because what you're, what you, this is a mechanic that not a lot of people talk about. I'm sure Voltar's talked about it, but I haven't talked about it really in my videos. Um, essentially, the key to, to pretty efficient soldering, good soldering is there's, I have, I use thin, uh, thin solder, right? So this, the solder is half a millimeter, which is relatively thin. Uh, but also there is flux inside of it, right? So this is called rosin core flux. So you don't want extra solder. You really want the amount of solder and flux, like the ratio, I suppose, that's already in the solder is what's doing the work. 
right? So if I have extra solder, right, there might not there might not be enough flux that I need. So right, even this part that I already pre-soldered, that's a lot of uh, like that's a blob of solder. So you can choose to get rid of it or um, well, so I'll show you in a second. So now basically I'm gonna go do the other pins. I'll shut up for a second. Kind of add the solder pins. Let me know in the chat if you would like a, if you would like me to make a, a soldering techniques video. Okay, so now we get when we get to the end here, we might run into a little bit of trouble. But what you can do, see now you've got a lot of solder on your pin. But you saw me do it. You saw me heat it up like normal and then pull away really quickly, and that will that will grab some of the solder and pull it out. Really, so that the solder is sort of sticking to the soldering iron. See, there's there's a lot of solder here, but not now. If we go look at I wish I had a better zoom lens. Oh, there's still there's still a little extra solder on that pin, uh, but all the other pins are pretty good. So that's basically it. That's what I wanted to say. Let's see if I can get some more of that solder off. Eh, didn't work. Anyways, all right, we can move on to the next one. So now we have a we have a our first cable or first uh, plug that's pretty exciting now we can do the other one and it's cool how these are all brand new you kind of compare them to the um kind of compare them to the original look how gross well i don't know is that the original color tan do you think they had tan instead of white or like off-white or are those just faded i mean this is inside the console this couldn't be uh this couldn't be the new part. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I think you're right, reverse retro. I mean, I mean, there are some things that I wish I had known. This, oh, that's the one I hadn't soldered yet. There are some things that I wish I had known, but I mean, it's more, I like to say this all the time, even in my day job, it's a philosophical thing. <laughs> and when I say a philosophical thing is it's like something that you can just talk about. Uh, but right i mean you have to have uh practice i suppose too but it's it's something that you can discuss with somebody else who's also good that's the way that i kind of say use that right you know how do you how what's what's your method of doing one thing because there's no there's no one exact perfect method right so that's just my two cents um okay now we can uh i guess we can do Tack this down, tack one of the corners down. I know I said I'd do it the other way before, but if I had some solder on there in the first place, I probably could have done this instead. Make sure it's flat, okay? I was looking into, I, I don't know if there's any camera, are there any uh, photography people, camera people in the chat? Um, I was looking into getting a a lens that would be even more magnification than this one. This is a really nice lens because, I mean, it's not, ideally I would want it to be higher zoom than this, but it allows me to do this, right? So I, I can get wide and I can talk about stuff, right? And then I can zoom in a little bit and talk about, you know, talk about stuff. Autofocus is good. It's so like I can talk about, hey, Chemtronics, use this wick. Oh, back to the board and it'll autofocus pretty good. Then I could also put it into manual focus and I can change the focus. I can focus on something. I don't know. It's kind of only interesting if you're good at uh, if you're uh, interested in cameras. Practice helps, but yeah, that's right. Ending well, yeah. At the end of the day, you could have a hundred million different soldering masters, you know, and they would each probably teach their own methods differently if you really uh, took their courses, but. And I, I think also tools help too. People, I know, I know people have different budgets, you know, and, and different, they have different enthusiasm levels for being in the hobby, right? Some people 
are super into it, like I would say I'm probably there. <laughs> and a lot of people on Twitter are there. But uh, I understand if you're not super enthusiastic and soldering and you just want to get the mod done, then I suppose you probably don't care about tools and technique. But I think it's interesting when you're involved with uh, learning about it. So, all right, we have our plugs. That's cool. It's exciting. They look good. All right, now the fun begins. And maybe we can start with, uh, well, okay. So I'm gonna take out some things. These are the two, excuse me. Uh, these are the two sockets for the, for the CPU and the PPU. Because keep in mind, remember we're using we're using the original PPU and CPU, right, from the old board, the original board. But they're going to go into sockets on the uh, new board for now. So when you order larger parts or like dip packages from DigiKey or Mouser, sometimes they come in these cutoff tubes just to ship them to you. So you just some some of them have different sort of th ways to keep them in there, but. Got two sockets. Um, now, for actually for all of these ICs, uh, IC stands for integrated circuit too, if you're wondering, which is basically any, on older boards like this with through hole uh, chips, right? It's basically any, any chip like this or that or that. These are all considered ICs, integrated circuits. So, um, but on newer stuff too, even the really tiny components are considered ICs. It's just a bundle of a bundle of circuits inside of a black box, essentially. You can think of it that way. Um, so every IC that's going on this new board, it's directional, uh, as in it has a specific direction that it has to go. But it makes it the Open Tenno board makes it really easy because it's marked uh, with a little bump, little half moon. And either the socket has a half moon, um, there's a notch on the side, so that'll match up with a half moon. Or if we put that away and we grab a different, here's, I don't know, you wait. Ooh, look at that, blue. Where does you wait go? U8, oh, U8 is up here. Okay, so there's these little bumps on, oh, that's confusing. Look, there's like a, a circle and a half moon, but I think it's the half moon that's the indicator. So the half moon lines up with the half moon on the on the silk screen. So that's how you, that makes it pretty, basically pretty easy to solder these, but what I want to do now is I want to see, are these pieces the same height, right? So should we solder these first? Probably doesn't matter because these will probably be shallower than the parts that are already on the board. So it doesn't really matter. But one thing you'll notice if you try to get these IC soldered in is, I mean, maybe it won't be easy to see, but the, the, when you buy a new IC through hole, IC, the feet are wider than the the holes i hope that makes sense um now without doing anything to them you're never going to get them in there so uh but we have an easy way to do it, fix that and it's essentially take it put the legs like the edge of the legs flat against the table or something and you just kind of push down a little bit so in a sense you're flattening out one side so now this side's flat and that side's still angled and you just rotate it to the other side and then psh, done. So now it's like a staple instead of uh, spread apart. And then it'll fit in. So you still got to be careful. You know, I don't think you're going to do it perfectly, but uh, you just got to make sure that you don't bend any of the legs as you put it in here. Yeah, see, the capacitors that we put in are, are taller. So we already blew it, but that's all right. We'll make it work. 
Um, okay. So that's U8, I think, right? Where's the package? That's what I said, right? U8. Yep. So we're going to we'll solder U8 here. Uh, we're going to have to do the... This is the part where I probably need my, my knife edge tip. Okay. Uh, all right. I don't have two soldering irons and I want to do... <laughs> This is how I change tips in a hot soldering iron um, without waiting. So first of all, you turn it off first. So I'm turning the switch off. Um, and then I grab my, my uh, these are my larger uh, wire strippers, but at the end we have these uh, clampy boys. So I take the, this is this is why this part of my soldering iron is all messed up. I'm gonna move this out of the way. This is not something I recommend. Uh, I recommend you waiting, but if you're an idiot, don't, don't sue me or anything for this. So basically you don't wanna touch anything now that's metal. You can touch the handle, cause that's what you ha have already been touching, but you don't wanna touch anything with your hands. Um, so we got to unloose uh, my Hako uh, FX 888D. I got to unloose, un unscrew this nut. Right? That's unscrewed all the way. Now I can grab it with the screw or the pliers and I like whack it. Oh God. <laughs> Come on. So now I got to get the tip out. <laughs> This is a fail. Ah. Ah. Oh, okay, we're making progress. Oh God, <laughs> it's gonna roll on the floor. Um, okay. This is whack. Come on, stupid thing. Well, that wasn't supposed to go that way. Maybe if we push on it with the Something or other. Yeah, uh, interesting retro um, or reverse retro. The uh, the FR three hundred one has has a tool. This part here is a, a nut, um, and it's like spring loaded. And you can, while this is hot, there's a piece that it comes with that allows you to just take this off. And then you could swap out the tip and then reinstall it. So the FR301 has a cool um, apparatus, but the uh, the cheaper soldering iron does not. <laughs> yeah. Now, this happens in real life ending. It just, uh, I cut it out of my videos. <laughs> I don't show it. All right, I'm going to whack it. Here we go. Well, this is one way to destroy a soldering iron tip. Oh no. <laughs> oh, we did it. Look at that too, it's standing up. Okay, that's hot still. So uh, use your tweezers, move it aside. I have a, this is a silicone. Uh, have you needed to swap out? Yeah, I do have, um, I have a thicker one. I worked on a pinball machine uh, PCB. This is maybe this is not the thickest one. I might have an even thicker one, but uh, it's useful for if you look at an NES. And th these are some pins that we're gonna have to use solder. These are really thick pins that go through to the power PCB, right? So these ones here, and they actually make tips for the Hako, the FR301, that will fit over it. So you don't have to. You could just sw swap out the tips and. Um, hit it with a hammer. Yeah, hey Taylor. Uh, yeah, so yes, I have um, for that specific application. Maybe not for retro consoles, but okay, what was I doing? Okay, now we have to do the reverse. So this is still hot. So you still wanna, even though the tip is cool, this is cool, right? So this is fresh from my container. The ceramic 
this white part is the heating element so you don't want to touch that because that will get hot very quickly and then you just do the you repeat it and then carefully not cross thread the nut on there now you don't want to tighten it down all the way because i'm sure if you fiddle with your <laughs> i'm sure if you fiddle with your tips oh god i sound like voltar you know that you have to align you have to align the tip with the comfortable uh position on the grip it's like i always hold my soldering iron with the text facing me because that's just the way i like to hold it like a pencil and the the cable always falls the right way but uh as you spin it around as you spin this nut around that tip part is going to spin as well oh god okay I wonder if they do make a tool. They probably do. I hope that makes sense. So as I'm tightening this, this edge, this tip is also going to rotate. So you have to like counter rotate. Nope, still not good. Let's see, sorry guys, I'm a little OCD when it comes to this. It's gotta be in the right spot. All right, that's good enough. All right. We did it. 69. Yeah. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, it's got to be in the right position. I see what you did there. <laughs> All right, so now we're good. Now the writing is lined up and my the tip is the correct way it should go. Um okay. So that is that. If you if you're brave, no, actually I'm not going to be brave on stream. Okay. I I hope I'm not going to need to switch back to my chisel my uh chisel tip tonight because that was a, a nightmare all right let's do that where's that chip <laughs> now that i did all that effort i lost that chip <laughs> oh my god um uh well did it fall on the floor did i lose it under the board oh it's on there i'm an idiot okay well if anyone was screaming it's already on the board then I know I get it all right so here's here's how we're gonna solder all these bad Larry's um, yes it's still the board <laughs> thank you we want to attach this um, we want to do the same thing in the sense of we want to attach one pin on each corner first and then make sure that the chip is flat against the board but we're stuck with our knife edge tip so it doesn't make it particularly easy to um i'm just cleaning it off like i did the other one it doesn't make it particularly easy to just solder one pin so with one hand and this is kind of where i wish i had a helping hands however you'll notice that uh this board is kind of big and how would i do it on the camera like i don't know it's hard so with one hand i'm holding the chip onto the board pressing down on the other hand I'm getting solder on my soldering iron. Oh my God, it's off. Turn your soldering iron off with uh, on with your third hand. That's not a euphemism. <clears throat> Drink some water while you wait. Poster tack, like blue tack. Uh, yeah, that would work. Although the only problem with blue tack is you have to be careful with it uh, because if it heats up, it does fall off. But uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, I never thought of that. Like put a big blob of it on the top of the chip. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, cameraman, it works. Or, uh, that happens sometimes. All right, now we're at 650 degrees Fahrenheit. My cat is staring at me. Okay. All right, holding on to the chip with one hand. Hold, hold, get some solder on the iron with the other hand. Try to get it in one spot if you can. Nope, it kind of just went all over. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, do your best to try to just get the solder that you have on one of those chips, or one of those legs, I mean. Wow, that did not work at all. Okay. Uh, if that doesn't work, like it's not currently. 
you could try putting something underneath where that chip is, like this roll of solder braid. Oh god. I feel like I'm gonna mess this up. Well, this is a learning experience for everyone, including me. Okay. I think we put a thing underneath. All we wanna do is we wanna solder one of these pins. That's it. Uh, okay. So we wanna get, so wipe the solder off. Get the extra so, excess solder off so that we're clean again. I know this is annoying, but it's, yeah, it works. It's my method. So then we get some solder on one of these pins. What? That was whack. Okay. You want to leave you probably want to leave it a little longer than you normally do. Um Oh god. Okay, so now the problem you'll see Now the problem you'll see is you don't want this to happen and I know this is going to be really hard. But look at the chip. The chip is like I don't know. It's doing the rodeo or something. See how it's lifting up on one side? You want to while you only have the one pin, you want to heat it up and push down again. Small cubes of foam. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, if you could like, I don't know, temporarily stick a piece of foam on the end. That's a good idea. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna, uh, yep, that's right, cameraman. I'm gonna do the one corner on each end and then drag out of the rest. So um, this will go faster once I don't have to explain it every time. But so we, before we move on, we wanna make sure that this chip is flat against the board. So I'm pushing down lightly with this finger and then I'm gonna heat up that pin again. And as it's heating up, it's gonna let me push the, the part down and now that part is as flat as it's gonna get, which is what we want. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, so that looks pretty good now that that um, this I see this dip dual inline package through hole. Uh, now I'm just gonna do the other end, the opposite corner, I guess I should say, not just the other end, but the also the opposite corner, so that it's like held in both sides. Okay. Cool. So now I'm pretty sure that that chip is not going to go anywhere. <clears throat> we could double check, triple check, I suppose. Um, that, that chip is flat. Another thing, I mean, you could also check it's flat this way as well. So not only is it flat, this direction, but it's also flat the other direction too. Okay, so now we take, there's a couple different ways you can do this now. Um, we're gonna try a couple. So the first one I'm gonna try is, first I'm gonna put this on auto fo uh, manual focus so that it doesn't lose the focus. Hopefully you can see, I know I can't really zoom in further than this, unfortunately. But, um, okay, the first thing I'm gonna try to do is I'm going to uh, add flux as I'm doing this. So yes, I know I said that the, the solder has flux in it, but in this case, it might not be enough. So one thing that you could do you got full flow from the back side to the other side. Yeah, yep. So one thing you can try to put some liquid flux down right and then hopefully before it evaporates you're going to just kind of get your iron on the like the opposite end of the row of pins right and put some put some solder and so this is where um thin flux actually or thin solder actually doesn't really help you because it it kind of impedes your flow good solder here I'm not, I don't do this that often, so I know it's maybe not as good as someone like a Voltar, but the idea is you're trying to just pool solder on the tip as you're going down. Yes, flex is your friend. Um, you wanna like pool the solder on your tip and that same mechanic that I was using to, you know, like heat up a pin and then pull it off with the soldering iron is the same mechanic that will pull the solder from one pin to the next as you're moving down. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I think what I did wrong 
last time is I didn't pull enough solder out of my solder holder. You probably want a lot of, of solder in your hands, like I kind of pulled out a lot, so they don't run out like I did. Okay, I think that looks okay. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. Oh, let me take it off. Manual, please. This look terrible. That's pretty good, right? This this is the row I just soldered. It's pretty good. It's much easier too. First of all, this is a brand new PCB, right? So using modern PCB manufacturing. So those vias are probably more sturdy than something on an older console. Two, we're using only new flux this, or only new solder. There's no old solder in here, you know. So we have a lot of things going for us when we're doing it on a new board like this with new chips. Uh, 650 ending is what I normally use. Um, that's like my baseline, even if I'm using my, my K chip. All right, let's try that other row before we move on to the next one. So again, we're gonna turn it on manual focus. <laughs> we're gonna add some liquid flux, right? A bunch of it, then move it out of the way. Then starting at the top, Get, his, get a bunch of solder onto the tip, you know, pull it, and then start to move backwards. You can kind of go up and down, like short. You don't have to just go all one direction. But then when you reach the end, you're gonna go back up and keep adding more solder until you come back. So you wanna go like, what I do is go from like the top to the bottom and then back to the top and then off. So hopefully that makes sense. And uh, I think this other one is pretty good. Not 100% perfect, but... Yep, I don't know. I think it... You know, you can kind of see the sheen is a little bit different. I don't know if you guys are that... Uh, can see it that well. But like this sheen is different than the middle here. You know, that's just a sign that you either didn't have enough flux in that one spot. Like this right side here has less sheen than this side here. Like maybe that means that you heated this these pins up too much or they don't have enough solder. So if you really want to, you can go back and touch that up to make it 100% perfect. But um, we have so many of these to do, so I'm just gonna move on. That's some nice dirty drag soldering. Yeah, that's my specialty. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. Let's do, let's see if we can find U7. So that was U8, let's get him out of here. Done with U8. I have a pile of uh, I have a pile of them on my floor. The the bags, the little baggies, these baggies. So this is U7. It's the same chip, I think. That should be the same footprint. They're called when they when they look the same, even though they might not they may not be the same exact IC. That's called a footprint, and it just has to do with the size, the how many pins are on each side and whatnot. So. All right, same thing, basically rinse, repeat. Look for the side with the, the divot, right? So this is the side of the divot. It's gonna go on the left side again, same way. We need to do our um, bending. Drag soldering, yeah. Well, <laughs> I think the my, one of my keys, sorry, I'm, I'm bending the legs off screen here. One of my keys to just doing it is to have maybe like unwarranted confidence <laughs> how hard is it to remove an nes without a vacuum um i that my first nes rgb that i did uh i did it with a hand actually you know what if you guys want to i don't i'm i'm kind of afraid to say this but i suppose we're in the best case scenario maybe i'll maybe if you want me to i'll do it to remove the cpu it's not the same exact uh as the PPU because the PPU has more ground pain, uh, planes underneath, which makes some of the pins harder. Basically you need to leave the heat on it longer. But I think we have enough of enough other things that I can demonstrate using the solder, the desoldering iron. If you want me to, I'll try to take this off with just the solder sucker. Uh, and then maybe that will give you some, I'll give you some pointers or I'll fail miserably like I did um, with my, I know I did my, with my first uh, removal, but I don't know. It's up to you guys. I'm definitely not going to do that with the, this, this part. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that tonight, camera cameraman. You'll have to wait until uh, 
probably next stream. All right, so this is U7, going into U7, U7's hole. Wait, am I sure that was U7? Yeah, I think it is, okay. And now it's just essentially the exact same thing. Make sure it's flat. Um, get a thing to put underneath it. Put the thing on the thing. And then, uh, yeah, it was hard. The only thing holding me back from doing my own. Yeah, uh, I know what you mean, cameraman. Um, I told this story last week, but um, one of my first memories of uh, when I was getting into, not even like doing it on a channel or anything, but just getting into uh, doing mods is, I think I watched a video from Voltar using the desoldering gun and then i looked up how much they were and i was like there's no way in hell i'm gonna ever afford be able to afford slash want to buy a desoldering gun and then fast forward like five years and i have one <laughs> and i like using it <laughs> so all right same thing basically just make sure that's flat so hold hold down to the chip and then heat it up press flat i'm not gonna i'm not going to um, you know, unless somebody new comes in and they're like, hey, how'd you do that? I'm not going to reiterate everything. Then I'm going to do the other corner. But now I kind of see that there are other, there's a, oops, sorry. It's sort of off the screen here. This board is pretty long. There's another piece that's sort of in the way. Like here, you see this? This is sort of in the way here. So if I was gonna drag solder like I was doing last time, that piece might get in my way. So what I might do is I might just turn it over and use the other side. Just do it on the right side instead of the left side. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, hot air, re re uh, blah, blah, blah. Hot air rework station may work. Um, yeah, I'm surprised nobody does that. Maybe that's maybe that's harmful to the old traces. I don't know. Okay, hopefully you guys are around for the next. Well, shoot, I don't have my other. If I had, this is why I wish I had a second soldering iron because if I had a second soldering iron that I could just park my chisel tip on, then I would have no problem showing you guys how to use the solder sucker on this tonight, but I don't feel like undoing it. So maybe I should, uh, maybe I should look into a second soldering iron. All right, same thing. Start with the right side here, put down some liquid flux, get plenty of solder out of the holder, pull it up. Sometimes things go wrong and some pins don't want to cooperate. It happens. Oh, I was gonna say to reverse retro, part of drag soldering is have completely unwarranted uh, confidence to just do it. <laughs> Cause you just saw me, I butch I absolutely butchered that one. And uh it still worked. Okay, yeah, I think I'll do that. Um, cameraman. Alright. Let's do the other side. Yeehaw. See if you have thicker solder, then you could probably do that a little quicker, more efficient. Versus this is that thin solder, so. He did use a hotter rework station. Ah, oh, that's interesting. I guess my point is, don't be afraid to mess it up, right? Don't be afraid to mess drag soldering up. Well, you know, if you wanna learn how to get better, just do it, like, it's not, Unless, well, especially with something like the Open Tendo, like I said, brand new board, the the pieces are very durable, right? They're they're meant to be heated up. 
Actually, I don't like the look of this piece here. The pieces are meant to be heated up, right? So just do it. I mean, you're not going to really mess anything up. And if you do, it's, you know, I don't know, pretty cheap part. That's why another reason Open Tendo is a pretty good project. Okay. Oh, look at how much. Fl so this is the problem. This is what I've been complaining on Twitter about. Uh, about a, uh, I wanted to get a um, ultrasonic cleaner because I think it'd be really interesting or really easy to get an ultrasonic cleaner and just clean this whole board because this whole board is going to look like that at the end and that's ugly. And if anybody knows the struggle of trying to use isopropyl alcohol to clean off that, it just gets sticky. So, um, all right, we're going to move on because we got a lot more to do. Look at that, two chips done. Neato. All right. There's some chips down here. I think I'm gonna leave the sockets for last because then it'll be cool to populate them with the uh, CPU, or the PPU, I mean, at least. So let's see if we can find U9. U9, ooh, we got U9, look at that. Yeah, Josh, that's a good, that's really good. The last thing you want to do is be frustrated. I, I've been there. Uh, I've been there like when I did my, when I, before I had the desoldering iron, I was, that was, I get, kept getting frustrated because like the PPU wouldn't come out or whatever. And like, I know the, the, the feeling to want to like yeet an NES motherboard across your, your basement. I've been there. I have 99% alcohol, uh, cameraman. That's not a uh, industrial strength cleaner pen, IPA and a paper towel. Okay, yeah, I, I think what I'll do at the end is I'm gonna try, Leon on Twitter mentioned his his method and I'm gonna try to try that. I don't know if I necessarily like the idea of putting Windex on a new board, but hey, if it works, it works. Do these pins look strange? These pins look like black. See, these are silver down here, and these are black. Is that weird? They're not like rusty, they're just like... Oh, I guess I didn't bend those all the way, so I need to take this out. I know I don't have a, an IC chip remover tool. You always wanna make sure that, um, they do kinda look rusty, don't they? That is interesting. But they're not. They're like rusty, but not. Weird. Oops. Unfortunately, you can bend things too far, and then you gotta unbend them. Something like a tweezers. This row is bent too far. Yeah, oxidized. Just gotta make sure that you don't push it in too much before it uh maybe it's problem is because i was doing it on this rubber the silicone surface maybe if i did it on my actual table that would come out better oh i have there's um glitter all over the place because my son was playing with glitter like a week ago and now it's everywhere Yeah, I can try that. I wonder what will happen if I solder on top of it, too. I wonder if it will not solder well. Okay, so this is U9. Let's put U9 back. Okay, now it fits right in there. Yeah, that's strange. That color is weird. I know I probably should clean it first, but that's fine. I can always remove it later if I uh, have to. All right, same thing. Grab a thing. Put it on our chip. Make sure you put it in the correct direction. See, I wish I had one of those, something like, uh, uh, yeah, glitter is horrible. There, oh God, there's an episode of Peppa Pig. Um, I don't know if you guys ever watched Peppa Pig, if you have kids or whatever. There was an episode of Peppa Pig 
where the kids were at the daycare or the teacher, the school or whatever. And uh, this is the worst. Uh, the kids wanted, asked if they could play with glitter. And uh, the teacher, the teacher was like, uh, didn't want to let the kids play with the glitter. And then she finally agreed to let the kids play with the glitter um, for like five minutes. And so she got the glitter out of like a, it was like in a safe. And the safe had like, like a super complicated um, combination. And then <laughs> when she gave the kids the glitter to play with, like, it, like fast forwarded like five minutes or something. And the, it was a tiny vial of glitter, like it's the smallest amount of glitter. And uh, the glitter exploded all over the room and it was e covering everyone. <laughs> I know, I know a Peppa Pig is stupid, but sometimes it's funny. All right, I think we have it good enough in there. So just do one of those. I know this is not gonna be flat. Oh God, look at it. It's doing one of those. It looks terrible, jeez. All right. I think that's right. It's flat. All right, this is sort of different. We might have to solder one side, flip it over and do the other side after. All right, now we drag solder. Get a bunch of solder. The problem with drag soldering is you get good at it for like one project and then you don't do it for a while and then you just, it's like, you forget how to do it well. It doesn't take that long to get to understand how to do it all right and then you just don't do it for a few months and then it's hard. checking it out after I'm done. Maybe I could have used a little more solder on this. One thing I'd actually like to do while we're here, while I'm drag soldering is drag solder over this uh, resistor array because I didn't have my K tip on or my knife edge tip. So I'm just gonna YOLO try to drag solder. Just make sure at the end that you're not bridging any pins. I just had a bridge on one of the pins and I cleaned it up so. I don't know. That's probably terrible, but good enough. All right, where are we going to now? How about U10? I guess I should have done these before I did the, the uh, capacitors because these are all lower. Um, where is U10? Uh-oh. Don't tell me I don't have a U10. Hmm. Oh, U10 is the CIC chip. That's right. So that is another part we need to borrow from the real NES. <clears throat> All right, U2, the band. Does anybody like U2? Like I like one or two of their songs. Wow, this one comes with a little piece of foam. Wait, this is U4. Is that what I wanted? 
No. What? I guess I could do U4. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll mix it up and I'll do U4 here. Uh, what's interesting is now U4 is what? An SRAM. So this is a RAM chip. <laughs> Taylor, you don't like U2? So this is an, a, a RAM chip. So this is the, what the new one looks like. Look how big it, uh, small it is compared to the original. Let's uh, get it out of the foam. It's way smaller than the uh, the original chip. Look at that technology. So the why that is significant is there are actually two sets of. So this is this is U4. There are two sets of pin things here. Actually, I don't know which one you're supposed to solder to. The top one or the bottom one? I'm gonna guess it's the top one. But I think they all should be bridged together so you probably can't mess it up, but. Uh, that is interesting. I don't know, I wish Red, Her Red Herring was here. You could tell, tell me. Maybe I can Google somebody else's build. Maybe I should do that. I'm just doing the pin thing up to the side of my on my harder table. So now the ch the half moon thing is sort of on this side. It's got to be the top. Yeah, doesn't it? It's like double printed on the top. So like yeah, it, they're all bridged together, so it doesn't matter. But. You know, I'm just going to look at somebody else's build and see. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's interesting, Josh. So I wonder if they were, that's the reason why there's both is because they transitioned on the real boards on, the, on some of the newer ones to smaller chips. Interesting. I'm just going to quick Google, uh, over here. Actually, I can move over. Look at that. I can do this. All right, I can look it up. Ooh, look at this, I can even do this. Ready? Is this gonna be a good idea or a bad idea? <laughs> I don't think any of the, oh, this isn't populated, darn. Let's check out Long Island Video Gaming's video. I'm gonna pirate his techniques. Oh, he did an NES RGB in his. Oh, and he uses this. Oh, this was the this was the NES power board that um, Bob uh, talked about a long time a while ago. On, on so if you Google NES power board retro RGB, this is another one by Spinx. But I've got a different one from. Uh, Merlin Shaw. So we gotta go way back. Did he do a, oh, you know what? I bet you, okay, this is the video of him adding open, uh, the NES RGB. I bet you he, this is a different video. He probably installed the NES RGB. Um, okay. Oh, he did in the bottom. Look, this this S. Oh, you can't see. This is another SRAM chip, I believe, on the top. That is whack. Hold on a minute. Yeah, these are both SRAM. This other one is an SRAM. This is that's this thing here. So he did his on the bottom. Interesting. I don't know if that's good or bad. I like I said, it doesn't matter. They're all bridged together, but. Aesthetically, is it supposed to be on the top? I don't know. So we try to find his his um, Open Tendo video. This is super riveting streaming. Hooray! Okay, building a new NES. This is it.
he also had a time hard time with the uh, glare. This is a very shiny board. Okay, yeah, look. So he did the bottom ones. I don't know, chat. What do you think? Top or bottom? I think the top. But that is interesting that he did the bottom. Most are the bottom, huh? Oh, okay. It is, I guess it is the bottom. So if you look closely, that's then this, I don't like this red herring if he's not here, but uh, I don't know if he watches this. This is confusing because this double up here looks like it's meant to be the top because it's like double on the top. But if you look, uh, and they're both the same, the the two top ones are bridged together. However, the the middle and the bottom, or the middle and the top are bridged together. I think you can see that clearly in this angle. They're bridged together. However, the, the middle and the bottom are not. So that means you have to do them both in the bottom. Or you have to do them in the bottom for there to be a, a connection for the IC. Otherwise, you're just basically soldering an IC to, to itself. So I was wrong. I admit it. So let's get this out. Pull it out. Make sure you didn't bend any IC or legs on the IC. Nope. All right. Well, we did it. Come on, get in there. All right, double check that it's left. Okay, flip it over. This one, for some reason, the pins, pin legs fit pretty tightly in there. So I really don't need anything to hold it down as I solder it. But I'm gonna double check. finger push down yep good yeah that would have been sad if I uh, did two of these and I was like huh my, my NES doesn't work where is my liquid flux uh, oh god it knocked over the worst However, that's the good thing about these. Uh, it's good things about these little squirt bottles. Even if they knock over, they don't really squirt out, right? So it's pretty good. <laughs> that's funny. Just that one section. I think for the rest of it, I think is pretty clear. Just that one little section. It's not. So there should be some kind of a extra marking or lettering or something. Oh, sounds like one of my cats try to go outside. Well, you know, I like the fact that you can do big chips or little chips so you know in that sense it's fine but you could you could definitely mess it up if you only have little chips
I can imagine those other points are where you could mount header pins for direct access to, on the pass-through. No, I don't know. Uh, oh, I suppose I see what you mean. Like you could you could hook something up on this other side to come up to something. Maybe. Some, some parts are th thicker than others, but I don't like that side. There must be a thick ground plane on that side. Some of those pins are not easy to solder to. Look at that. So, so this is some other stuff that could happen potentially it is because of the amount of solder that you use when you are drag soldering, you could get some like solder splash. So you can, you see this little ball here, this little ball is actually a little piece of solder and you could just, it's cool enough where you can just pick it off with your finger. Um, just be careful if you're going to, if it's stuck on, you really don't want to use something like your tweezers cause that might scratch the, scratch the board. All right, let's do the other one, the other RAM chip. Although I guess we can move on to this. Maybe we can move up to this one. This is U2. So that was U4, I believe, right? Yep, U4. Next we're gonna do the band U2. These are like whoever whoever uh, packaged this was like this never this guy's never gonna get those out. Little does he know that I have tweezers. <laughs> All right, look for our circle. Bend the pins. Place it gently. Oh God. So if it doesn't go in, oh, this one also has black stuff on the pins. Interesting. Um, some of them, uh, cameraman, hold on a second. Let me just tack this one down and I'll show you what I mean. So I don't know if they exist right now. However, I'm pretty sure, uh, where's my PPU? Here it is. I'm pretty sure that somebody could design a circuit small enough to replace and accurate enough, even if it was expensive, like even if it had an FPGA in it or something, I'm pretty sure someone could design a replacement CPU and PPU. Uh, there are replacement ones, aftermarket ones already that, but I've heard that they're not as accurate or something. I haven't tested them before because I don't have them. Um, however, yeah. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that somebody could design a drop, something that was perfectly accurate. And I think that eventually in the future, maybe as, as real hardware becomes harder to find or people mess it up or something, maybe people will result to that, or they'll design, you know, a version of like the open Tendo that maybe has the FPGA baked into it. Because I'm still, I think people will still value having the board, a board, 
even if it's not 100% a one-to-one -one replacement. However, however, there are other things that there's no way that you could possibly, uh, I, I, I don't think, you could design something small enough. For instance, we need this piece here. I think that's a capacitor or something. And this is like a special thing, this green piece here. So we need this. Then we need these here. I think these are transistors, maybe these two black skinny bars here. We need those. We need the CIC chip. And I know that there is a, uh, a project that is like a blank thing here that you can like get rid of it, like a, a workaround. So basically this will let, prevent you from playing uh, bootleg cartridges if people still have those. I mean, the the, uh, the EverDrive still works with the CIC, but like if you had, I don't know, another knockoff cartridge, it might not work. Then we need this other black piece. Then we need these two long, or these four long pieces here. So I don't think you could, I think these are transistors as well or something like that. I don't think you could design a piece that's that small that would replace that. So you'd have to like actually re-engineer that portion of the board as well as I need this socket too. And that matches the socket or the plug where the power goes in uh, to the board. Yeah, I think you just snip one of the legs on the CIC to disable it. But you know what I'm saying? like. <clears throat> there's some pieces that you're never going to be able to make unfortunately so bummer but it's where the world we live in but I think it's much um, I won't say simpler but probably more feasible for somebody to literally just take a board even if it's just like, it looks like this board, it's shaped like this board. Is that cat sneezing in the background? Even if it just looks like this board, it has like FPGA, an FPGA in it. So it's like a clone emulated console that fits in a real NES shell. You know, it's wired up to the same outside parts. It's wired up to the cartridge slot. It's got the extension port. It's got, I don't even know. You'd have to have some other kind of power adapter, power plug thing here. But it would fit into a real NES board. It would just be an FPGA console. That's what I that's what I wish for the future. Because I think that'd be a cool project too. Completely, um, you know, some might say wasteful. Or, you know, like, just get a mister instead. But I think it would be cool to just be like, hey, you know, you don't have to do an NES RGB mod. You could probably even just buy... People could probably just develop you know, pre-made ones and you can just buy it and put it in. I don't know. Maybe does that take some of the fun out of it? I don't know. PGA is fun. Some some year I would like to learn how to program uh, them. I think that'd be pretty interesting. Let's see, did I solder that side correctly? Yeah, I did. All right, making progress. Now onto this RAM chip. We got two more big chips, or two more little chips, I mean, and then we could do the sockets. And then I think we're gonna end it there tonight. Software learning AI 
yeah, I wonder. <laughs> you know what's interesting about this um, this whole like AI generated art thing that people are upset slash excited about right now. I wonder if in the future we could just tell our FPGAs how to how to behave. Like, I wonder if with the amount of documentation that's out on the internet, I wonder if we could just say FPGA act like a uh, Nintendo Entertainment System CPU and it would just go out and do it. And then you just plug your USB cable into it and it flashes the chip and then you can just plop it in. How cool would that be? Don't you know to write it yourself? You could just say it. Maybe. That's pretty cool, cameraman. That's, uh, I'm always interested by that kind of stuff, that kind of technology, especially as a developer, software developer. Oops. I wonder if in the future, you know, I can imagine that as soon as you have, you know, AI, readily available AI that can automatically learn how to play games. Yeah, that is an interesting uh, thing to think about. It's definitely weird. I haven't really done that much with AI, but I kind of sort of understand the idea that you have to create models and then train train your program against the model rather than like, okay, here's how the AI should act. Um, right. I wonder, you know, if uh, there were, there will ever be like, you know, instead of, instead of esports teams with people, what if it was uh, like AI teams and try to, compete in video games using AI. <laughs> it's like, who can write the best AI? That'd be funny. All right, last one is U3. Last real chip before we do the two sockets.
Right. And that's a, that's an interesting way. I, I've read a little bit about the um, AI generating bots, how they have to, you know, when you, when you make an AI or when you give someone the AI, you're basically just giving them the, the, the software. You're giving them the program. You're not really giving them the, uh, the learning behind their, their AI then that, you know, you can, as if you're a company, let's say you can take that AI software, train it against your own model, your own set of data. Um, so that's interesting. Um, kind of like becomes your AI. I even saw in the, in a video, I think it was one from, uh, what was the name of the, uh, Anyways, it was talking about the AI generated art, but it had like, it accidentally had a, a watermark in it that was like blended up because it was just, you know, the AI had been trained on a, <laughs> a, a data set, an image data set that had a watermark on one of the images. It's interesting. So your AI is only as good as your, your data. Good night. Girlfriend's going to bed. The reason that AI is done in this fashion right now is because we don't have a standardized method in our system. Yeah. Um, yeah, general AI. I definitely have... Uh, I read a little bit about that. I like... Uh, what's his name? Guy does a podcast on, on YouTube. Uh, um... Crap. Let me, let me look at it. Let me look it up. Lex Lex Friedman. Like oh, I listened to a, an interview with Lex Friedman and uh, John Carmack, the lead, the developer from Doom and stuff. The guy from ID. He was talking about general AI. You know, that's sort of like, essentially you do need a general AI to do stuff like self, like full self-driving cars because, um, you know, humans, I, I don't know. I think you can only get so good at having a self-driving car with just the way that they've been doing it now. With sensors and things. And I'm sure there's some AI uh, in it now, but it's not like a general AI in the sense of like a human. So, I don't know. It's interesting stuff. Yeah, like a memory, <laughs> AI memory that they can give to each other, that they can communicate with each other, train each other. It's interesting to think about. good things are really flexy on both sides all right now we have the two the two sockets so let's see what those look like these are interesting this is what our uh, CPU and PPU are gonna slot into um, got I only have the PPU out right now this console is from a failed NES RGB, so it already had this part out. So as you can see, the, the pins are kind of sad. And maybe I'll, I'll actually, I should take some, uh, I don't know, I'll have to, maybe I'll straighten them out before I actually socket them in, because I don't want to bend them. They're not, they're kind of sad. <laughs> but we put the sockets in. 
And sockets also have a notch on one side. Let's put that here. Like that. Ooh, is this gonna stay? Oh, hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Girlfriend hurt herself in the bathroom. Don't know how. Okay, where was I and where's my socket? Where's my socket? Oh, I already put it in. All right, same thing. <clears throat> This is gonna be important to keep flat. So you wanna push up, make sure that it's flat. No gap down here. Oh, there's a little bit of a gap because that's on purpose though. This is part of the piece, part of the socket. had a uh, fishing scam today. I never had this happen to me today or uh, before. Actually for this I'm gonna I'm gonna solder all four corners just cause just cause Yeah so the I just got a new job recently and this the quote unquote CEO of my company texted me on my phone said I need you to do something <laughs> I'm like I don't work with my CEO look at my company uh, I guess that people can get your phone number from uh, uh, LinkedIn and try to fish you crazy Right, Look at that. That is a uh, that is a useful uh, AI. <laughs> I'm glad whoever designed that. All right. Hello, reluctant hero. hero. Kind of wrapping up, but it's uh, you've caught me for the last piece here. And then maybe I can try to straighten out the PPU and socket it. Um, I got all the new ICs in so that next time we'll be able to just replace old stuff from the old console. And then after that's all soldered, we can work on actually reassembling it.
So that's exciting. All right, match up this half moon over here. Um, so it's going to be in, in phases, um, reluctant hero. So the first phase is going to be getting a normal composite NES back up and running with this, uh, I'll share it in a second, that power board from Merlin Shaw. So this is just going to be a raw, uh, stock CPU. Uh, sorry, NES. <clears throat> but then I will be trying to order an NES uh, RGB 4.0 when that comes in. And I'm going to install that in this console. Um, probably over stream again because I think this is pretty fun. And I've already done a normal uh, NES RGB video. They're out, they're uh, they're out of stock, unfortunately. Uh, the NES RGBs right now, so I couldn't buy one of the new versions. I should have. I just, I was like, ah, eh. just debating whether or not I was actually going to do this uh, streaming thing when I released that video about the new version. I should have just bought it then when it came out. Should have known that everybody was going to buy them up. happened to that pin it got raised up hmm probably should have soldered these with the chip in it oh well I think what I, what I can do see this pin that this last pin is raised up actually that whole side is raised up that's annoying uh, well Try to push this back in. Oh boy, it's like really raised out. Well, I think one of the problems is this whole side, I think I pushed it in a little bit enough where it would be <clears throat> fine down here. But it looks like the whole side of the board is, uh, well, what I'd like to do, maybe I can try to put some tweezers here because I don't want to put my finger on those uh, pins. So it's gonna make it, it's gonna be hot. Ugh. Well, that was kind of a... Yeah. I just don't want to hurt my fingers. All right, maybe I'll make this worse. Whew, ouch. Yep, that hurts. And I'm starting to mess with the board now.
I think I'm fine. Or what I guess it could do is maybe, I've got an idea, I don't love this idea, but I'm gonna socket the PPU into here. Make sure I'm not bending any pins. Yeah, see it's not. Oh, God, that scared me. I know this is the, the PPU and not the CPU, but I think what we can try to do. Oh God, I hope I can get this out after. <laughs> uh, all right, so I've got the PPU installed. I hope it didn't bend any pins. This looks okay. Now I can hold on to the, the uh, chip, push up and solder it again. Well, definitely made it worse. Uh, by worse, I mean the solder. That's right. Clean it up pretty easily with just a fresh drag solder. Has anyone seen an original Famicom? I've seen the AV Famicom. I don't have one, unfortunately, but I have a top loader. Okay, I think that's fine. Good enough anyways. Get to the other side now. I guess that's the danger of heating this up too much is you can always make these uh, pins fall out of the, the plastic holders like the what are these called sockets that's fine that side's fine oh. can't really get a good angle this way this side's fine yeah, it's fine now the only problem is am I gonna damage this PPU I'm trying to take it out I think I have to do one of these. I'm not gonna do that on, on camera. <laughs> I'm gonna mess it up. But we just need to remember that this is the PPU and not the CPU. So if you come back next week and I haven't taken that out yet, yell at me because that needs to go here. All right, let me talk about uh, what we're gonna do next. Next week, next stream, I keep saying next week. I'll probably do it before next week. Uh, we have every, is this every new part? Every new part. What is this? U1? Did I forget a piece? U1? Uh, why do I have two U1s? That's interesting. I guess I bought too many U1s. Well, I'll verify that. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so yeah, that's all the new parts basically, um, with the exception of the when you buy the bill of materials, um, it it has you buy 
the like DuPont connectors for the expansion. I think I'm either gonna leave this expansion port blank or I'm gonna steal the real one from the real NES. No, reluctant here, unfortunately it doesn't, which kind of sucks, but uh, you could buy the board. Uh, you can watch my first video. The first video in this series, if you go under playlists, you can watch the Open Tendo playlist and you can watch how, to, how I ordered them. Um, that's just the easiest way to, to do it. But I know it sucks that you'll have to actually go find it, but that video will teach you how to order the parts using the bill of materials and stuff. It's really not that complicated. Plus you're pretty much going to need a real NES, unfortunately anyways, okay. So, what's left? I keep alluding to the parts that we're gonna need to steal from the original board. And that's basically everything that isn't done yet. So like, this this green piece on the board, or on the original board, these two black pieces, the uh, lockout chip, CIC chip. We're gonna have to solder on the, the power board. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll leave that for this, this stream after that. Uh, we need the socket. This, this plug here has to go here. And, and we have to repair it because I'll explain that next week. These, these two long, these four long black things go here. And then this skinny black thing goes there. And then of course the beautiful CPU. And I promised uh, yeah, that'd be a good idea if console five or maybe even like Castlevania because they have some stuff um, That's a good idea. Yeah, actually that's true. Yeah, maybe you can just use Miramasa to order the board and then order the all the parts from Console five, so I, I said to I think maybe cameraman or somebody I mentioned That I would desolder this with a uh, hold on. Let me get it. This is that tool I was talking about to reverse with with, with, blah, with reverse retro. This is the tool that lets you take the the uh, thing off the FR301 without having to turn the heat off. Yeah, that's a lot of effort, cameraman. Plus, I know I get satisfaction out of teaching people how to do it. Cause it's really not that hard and people always complain about, oh, I can't do this project or I can't do that project because I have to order the parts myself. Like that's just, it really doesn't take that much time. Like if you're gonna do the effort of actually soldering these bits on here, it doesn't, it takes a lot more lo time. It probably takes 10 times longer to put this board together as it does to order the parts, so. Uh, so here, I have this Koto solder sucker um, but on Amazon, I should put affiliate links in these videos because I recommend tools and things a lot and I should put them in the, these uh, streams as well. But I'm gonna use this to desolder the PPU, or the CPU by hand. I, I can't believe I'm saying that. It's gonna take, a, that should take its own <laughs> st single stream just to do that one thing actually. Maybe I'll do that, that'll be a torture chest. But uh, I said I would do it, so I'm gonna hand solder, hand desolder that um, because I already have the PPU desolder. The PPU is what you would normally desolder. Just want to make it clear. Want to make it clear. If you're just doing an NES RGB, you would just desolder this piece that's already desoldered on this one. But I can try to simulate that on the CPU because it's the same number number of pins, the same age. This board is the same age. Uh, that is the necessity, reluctant hero. I cheated and I'm using this. Uh, power board from Merlin Shaw that's already assembled, so not hand soldering that. Illuminato, don't say that because it's scary to some people. So uh, I'm going to do the CPU next stream with this. <laughs> so, but then there's a bunch of other, all those other parts I'm going to uh, use the desoldering gun. So if you're curious to see what it's like to do one or the other, then there's that. Um, all right, let me go back to the desk for a second. And uh, 
then we could talk a little bit more I guess <clears throat> is who selling pre-assembled boards Merlin Shaw does have an eBay let me put my OBS over here Merlin Shaw has an eBay where he sells pre-made ones however I will note that and I don't mean to say this to offend anybody but Zach Swar, who is a he is an actual electrical engineer by trade not to say that Merlin Shaw is not an uh, electrical engineer I don't really know what he does for a living but I know for a living uh, Zach Swar does electrical engineering for a living and he has some comments about the power system of those boards so they should work and I'm gonna just send it because I have one and you know while, while I don't want to do you know I don't want my board to be damaged I'm willing to test it for people you know to see what the current version is like but it'll just be composite anyway so it's fine um, and if you watch my retro modern news video from Sunday I mind posting like yeah I can find it I can try to find it uh, if you watch my retro modern news video you know that Merlin Shaw uh, is working on a uh, a component one that will hook directly into the it hooks directly into the NES RGB so uh, it'll give you component out output through a, a jack I sent this to somebody recently uh, oh I've typed the wrong thing in this uh, yeah okay I found it So again, like I said, I don't know the quality of this board. I'll put it in the chat anyways, if you're interested. It's sort of expensive for just on a whim buying it. But, um, you know, I don't know. If, you, if you're if you willing to wait for me to, to install it and try it out on the OpenTendo first, you could do that. And then if it works well for composite, you could buy it. Or if you want to wait for if you want to wait for uh, the component one, you can do that. Yeah, I think it would be cool if somebody just made just the power board without any of the component or the composite and the audio. Well, I guess it doesn't make any sense, does it? I have a great open MVS. I just bought a spare MV1C. Yeah, I actually have a spare. It's in uh, Saran Wrap down here. I don't know why I bought it. I just felt like someone who was going to come out with a new mv1c project <laughs> so it's chilling down there in the bottom next to my open mvs which i haven't played with in a while and also oh no open mvs is in the bottom then the shrink wrap new one and then my first one that i bought that was for my super gun minigun so uh if you guys have recommendations for projects that you want to see um me do i'm interested maybe well I have the forbidden mod. Let me get it. <laughs> Let me get this. I think Bob from Retro RGB would be pissed if he saw that I had this. <laughs> the forbidden mod. Uh, I couldn't help myself. I'm just, I'm just interested. Uh, in to see the quality well not to see the quality I know it's probably gonna be Garbo but uh, I guess I've I've been known as the consoleizer guy not nobody said that but I have one two three three four different GBA consoleizers I'll probably get a fifth if Gamebox sends me the SP the Game Boy SP one and then they're gonna send me the Game Gear one so I'm gonna have a bunch of consoleizers and now I have this one he ripped that thing apart yeah you know that's fine I think that it's fair that he can do that people will review things but 
um, you know, my my use case is not necessarily the same as the people that Bob is trying to have not buy this. So like the people Bob is trying to warn to not buy this, you know, I'm a special case because I'm just curious. So here's the shell. It's like a blue and blue and ghost or blue and smoke. I mean, um, Yeah, I would be willing to do that, I think. Um, although, I, game, uh, game Boy Advance SPs are getting expensive, unfortunately. I guess everything is getting expensive. So, uh, I really thought about creating a, I don't know, doing something, Patreon or something, for, uh, from there were some recent events at Patreon that makes it, Patreon seem kind of scary uh, now, but, maybe like YouTube memberships or something just to get people, you know, just to get some money, I guess. I mean, it's, there's no other way for me to say it other than I, I could use help acquiring some of the things. I mean, I don't, I won't say that I have a super like bad job. Like I have a decent job, but like, you know, I buy a house, I afford other things and I just can't afford to buy do follow my original strategy for the channel, which was literally buy every time a mod came out that was interesting or a kit or a, or a open source project. I wanted to make a video on every single one of those things. That was my original goal. And like, if I ever get up, you know, if I ever end up doing this full time, that's literally what I would do. I would go through, make a video or stream every one of those uh, open source projects that I talk about. The reason I talk about the things that I do on retro modern news is because those are, projects that I actually care about. It's not like I'm putting in BS filler, like the, the Twitter, uh, Twitter things that I retweet, the people that I follow, all those th projects, I would not do that if I didn't care about it. Right. So, but it just gets, I can't afford all of it. So I don't know. It's not, I don't know, uh, what that will amount to, but, um, you know, I feel kind of bad saying to people, "Hey, look, the only value I can add, I'm like, I'm not a, I'm not a developer, you know, I'm not a, or a, like a mod creator, I'm not a, you know, a tech, like a person like a retro tech or like a cat, I'm not a cat, I'm not a Bob, you know, I don't have all these connections with people, and I mean, maybe I'm similar to Bob, but I'm not uh, in." I'm like a generalist, I suppose, not like a one specific console. As your lawyer, I advise the tweets are not endorsements. Yeah, well, go fly kite. <laughs> hey, cat. A cat likes to be slapped like this lightly. She likes it. So, I would, what what I would do in return, I think, if I was going to start a, a a Patreon or a membership, YouTube membership is I don't like the idea of offering my videos behind a paywall, any of them, right? Like, I don't think that that's fair um, for anybody, right? So I don't like, oh, maybe you could consider like, oh, you get it free, uh, you get it early a week or something, and then you get it afterwards if you, did, if you don't pay. But I just hate that. I hate that. Personally, I just hate that. <laughs> so I wouldn't want to do that to other people. Like, unless people want, really want to pay for behind the scenes, I think that the only, I don't know what value could I add other than, hey, this is interesting. But what I would do in return is, you know, I would make sure to balance the books, right? If anytime I buy a mod, I just put, you know, the money into a bank, say how much value is in the bank, and then I would just say, hey, I'm buying this with this mod. Or uh, that, I guess that'd be interesting. People that pay, people that pay could give their opinion about what mod to do next. That's an interesting idea, and you can vote. And whoever the highest vote is is what mod I do next. But sometimes I can overrule because I think there are mods that people should see, but on the surface they don't care about it until they actually see it. Because that's a thing. Billable hours. Yeah, I know what you're saying. There's a lot of I know I do a lot of work um, without pay, like in my and and YouTube AdSense and. Um, even I have my Amazon affiliates, which I don't, you know, I should be making videos that take advantage of my 
uh, Amazon affiliate stuff. I don't know if they're supposed to talk about this, but I'm talking about it. Um, do they not? Uh, oh, wow. So they uh, already have a bunch of retro stuff? I didn't know that they they gated those uh, retro their digital foundry retro stuff. Um, so I don't know. Is it a raffle? I'm not giving it away. I'm not raffling off the console at the end. I'm just saying, hey, you can give me money, and but you can have a say in what I spend that money on, or you can have some say in what I spend that money on. So uh, I don't know. It's something I thought about, but it, it's. I don't. I, I have like a mental block about whether or not I should consider myself worth it. Like I don't feel like I'm worth it. Like I, I don't. Uh, the only skill I have is oh, did I turn my soldering iron off? I did. The only skill that I have is actually doing the thing and marginally recording it and making videos, editing it. <laughs> Very slow release. Interesting. So, is that worth it? I don't know. But yet again, stuff like this, the Open Tendo. Um, uh, I wouldn't say that's a raffle. Um, yeah, it's still paid content, but imposter syndrome. Yeah, I Illuminato. Trust me, even my my day job, I feel it sometimes. It's like things are aren't cut and dry. When people talk about, especially on like especially on social media, if you try to watch any kind of content on YouTube or something about, oh, how do I do this thing? How do I become better at being a YouTuber? How do I become, how do I get a new job? You know, how do I do this? And like, it makes it seem so easy. And like, all you gotta do is grind and do it, do this, do that, do this. This is how you should approach it. And it's like, that's not real at all. Um, oh, I see, yeah. I mean, it sort of makes sense. I mean, they got to pay the bills and they got to try to entice people to become patrons. But I mean, I think that's how a lot of those companies make money. I mean, and merch too. I think uh, Linus Tech Tips did a breakdown of where they make income. And I think a majority of it is, um, well, I don't know. I, I can't, I think it was, a lot of it was, was merch. So that's the other thing I could do is make merch, but like, I don't imagine my videos are going to go viral and I'm going to get tons of money and my CPM, which is the or RPM or CPM, which is cost per melee, which is how YouTube determines how much, how much money you should make per thousand views. Uh, that fluctuates and mine is, I think it's kind of low. And plus I don't have like people just stop by people just stop by my videos on Sunday do the news and they don't watch the next one. I, I'm not like, and don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to complain. I'm not trying to say, Hey, I wish people would watch my videos more. Yes, I do wish that, but I'm a realist. I understand that I'm not good at gaming people into watching every little last little thing and whether I'm going to adopt that strategy ever. I don't know, but, um, I just don't like that gaming gamification of my life. That's in a sense what professional YouTubers do is they gamify their life, their entire work, which becomes more than work. Like when you're a YouTuber that does it full time and you do a lot of work, you put a lot more than 40 hours a week. It's a lot more than that. It's I'm sure those like a lot of those people are constantly hooked, plugged in, especially if you're like a news, any type of tech news or like Alliance tech tips or a, gamers nexus or a, a digital foundry you're literally constantly watching twitter you're watching anywhere where news can come in and you get tips from people and as soon as something happens oh this is a juicy story i gotta make it i gotta make this video now 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 uh i, I wouldn't say it's sacrificing my integrity illuminato i just because i mean there's some integrity in having the discipline to make the content that people are going to watch. I mean, that's the thing, that's a job. Make content that pe people are gonna watch. That's a thing that you know, like, and not in the sense of like, oh, let me craft the content that I wanna make. It's let me make something that I know people are going to click on. That's a thing and that's a skill. 
So, but that's that's my mindset. I'm like, I'm constantly, I wouldn't consider this art, but I mean, I guess it kind of is. It's interesting. I guess like if, if you guys, well, you probably don't know. If you know anything about mechanical keyboards, there's this guy, Teha Types, who's a Twitch streamer, but he does it full time now. And he, he Twitch streams his mechanical keyboard builds for people. So people commission him to build mechanical keyboards. Here's one of mine. I built this myself. So he does, you know, all the soldering, all the lubing of the key switches and stuff. Ooh, ready? Ooh. So he does that on Twitch all day long. That's what he does. So it's like, and then he makes it sort of artsy. He's got really nice cameras. He's got the, the jazzy music. You know, it's like, that's his vibe. And he, he that's, I get some inspiration from that. Like, uh, you know, I get some inspiration from that. Maybe not steal it all a hundred percent, but, um, just, I think there's just something different out there than just grinding one video after the other because I don't compete well with that. The only video that I did so far that, the only, not my news video, but the installation, mod installations that has done well has been the Game Boy, or the 3DS consoleizer has 35,000 views or something now. And it's not super competitive. And that, that video, that is my highest viewed video of all my installs modding installs that video has not even broke even with the mod or the console that i bought so just put it that way and all the money i've ever made so far but any of the you know amazon youtube um uh, adsense has not yet paid off my camera that i bought when i first started the channel this camera alone i have not paid off yet so I like it. I, I'm, I'm super glad that I got it, and it's I've used it a lot. I use it all, every every video, every time you see me on camera. Pretty much, this is actually webcam, but you know, I stream that tonight. I use it, so I use it a lot, and I use it when I go on vacation. I want to take pictures and stuff. Yeah, I think. I mean, I I don't like that attitude, reluctant hero. I understand it, right? Because and I you know I understand unsubscribing from people after you get bored of that that topic, right? That makes sense. Um, but if you really think about, if you are a hardcore YouTube user like I am, like I do it, just need to hustle more. <laughs> yeah, just hustle more. Um, if you're a hardcore YouTuber, you you can kind you can feel yourself if you like cycle through hobbies or or go through phases of the content you like on YouTube. You can kind of catch yourself like, oh. I'm coming into a new phase, a new a new topic. Got to subscribe to a bunch of people in that topic to stay up to date. And you know, find out how to do it better. And then you realize, you know, three months, six months later, you're just like, ah, eh. you don't really care anymore. And they just kind of hang out there. But those channels just continue to ch churn. You know, not in a bad way. I mean, I I truly do feel like those people care about the thing that they're doing. Like I care about mods. I've been doing it for years. I wouldn't do it. I, I try to. I try to space it out enough where I don't get burned out, but I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it. Um, so yeah, I agree. The stream, this is a good, this is a good tool for me. Cause it's one thing about only making videos, like only modding when I do a video is I end up having just a bin filled with mods that I don't have time to do. So I end up not modding for myself. I end up modding. Well, it, sometimes I mod for myself. Like Pico Boot was a mod that I did for myself. Um, most of them are mods that I like. I wanted to do personally, but some of them it became. Oh, I think this is going to be popular. That moves before, you know, the mods that I want to do myself. So I got to do this mod because it's timely, you know. But then I never get to the mods that I want to do myself. <laughs> like I have a Wii, Wii HDMI mod in there that I got from someone. Phantom mods, maybe it's in there got the stupid Game Boy consoleizer from Intech. This is just a stupid thing that I know is going to be dumb. Maybe I'll stream this one day. I think this would be a cool thing to break up because there's no soldering involved with that. Um, but so this was a good way for me to uh, hold myself accountable for doing the Open Tendo because I've well, I've always wanted to do that. I'm curious what the what the quality difference will be like between that and a real console, real console, original console. Just do a side by side and then move on. Uh, all right, I've ranted enough. Thank you everyone.
Um, I already went over what we're gonna do next week. I guess the next stream is I'm gonna be trying to take the CPU out of the old NES board over there by hand with the solder sucker. I'm not gonna use the desoldering gun. I'm not looking forward to that <laughs> because it's a lot of pressure to get it right, but we'll, we'll do it. We'll get it right. Um, uh, oh, hey, Scruffy looking RGB. I'm about to sign off, sorry. Hey, thanks. Thanks for saying that. Um, I appreciate it. Um, all right, sorry for sorry for being over now, but I gotta move on to the next thing. So next next stream, I'm gonna tackle taking the CPU out of that um, NES. So thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for letting me rant for a little bit because you know it helps. I don't really get to talk to a lot of people about modding consoles and stuff. Uh, I don't really know anybody in, in real life that cares that much. Um, I know a lot of people on Twitter that care, but that can be unhealthy if you only talk to people on Twitter. So, all right. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye, everybody.